Holy Father in heaven, thank you Lord for giving us the opportunity to fellowship with you as we go through our Christian journey. We are faced with a lot of temptations and trials that we cannot meet in our own strength. For that reason, Lord, we come to fellowship with you this moment that we may receive edification and strength from you, that we may be able to overcome all trials, temptations that come our way. On that note, Lord, we pray, please grant to us of your spirit that as we go through your word, we shall be revived, refreshed, enlightened, strengthened, encouraged and empowered to meet all the trials and troubles for today. We pray, Father, that you would also help us to rightly divide the word of truth. I commit myself unto your care, Lord. I am a vessel that is not qualified and I pray, Father, that you would consecrate me to your service, sanctify me, Lord, and grant me of your spirit, or that your children may be blessed. In Jesus' name, Amen. Conflict and Courage, July 3 Wisdom for the Asking If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. James chapter 1 verse 5 The God whom we serve is no respecter of persons. He who gave to Solomon the spirit of wise discernment is willing to impart the same blessing to his children today. When a burden bearer desires wisdom more than he desires wealth, power or fame, he will not be disappointed. Such a one will learn from the great teacher not only what to do but how to do it in a way that will meet with the divine approval. So long as he remains consecrated. The man whom God has endowed with discernment and ability will not manifest an eagerness for high position, neither will he seek to rule or control. Of necessity, men must bear responsibilities, but instead of striving for the supremacy, he who is a true leader will pray for an understanding heart to discern between good and evil. The path of men who are placed as leaders is not an easy one, but they are to see in every difficulty a call to prayer. Never are they to fail of consulting the great source of all wisdom. Strengthened and enlightened by the master worker, they will be enabled to stand firm against unholy influences and to discern right from wrong good from evil. They will approve that which God approves and will strive earnestly against the introduction of wrong principles into his course. The wisdom that Solomon desired above riches, honor or long life God gave him. His petition for a quick mind, a large heart and a tender spirit was granted. It would be well for us carefully to study Solomon's prayer and to consider every point on which depended his receiving the rich blessings that the Lord was ready to give him. God commended Solomon's prayer and he will today hear and commend the prayers of those who in faith and humility cry to him for aid. He will certainly answer the fervent prayer for a preparation for service. In answer, he will say, Here I am. What wilt thou that I shall do for thee? He who led Solomon's mind as he made this prayer will today teach his servants how to pray for what they need. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is Wisdom for the Asking. We looked at how Solomon 
asked God for wisdom. And that's what we are going to be looking at, why this is a very important thing, especially for those in the position of leadership. It's a very important thing that you, we understand our hearts, that we understand why we are doing what we are doing and what is the aim of our actions and tasks and responsibilities. One very key thing that we read in our devotion from Conflict and Courage, page 190, paragraph 3 says, So long as he remains consecrated, the man whom God has endowed with discernment and ability will not manifest an eagerness for high position. Neither will he seek to rule or control. Of necessity, this is what we must understand. These responsibilities given are given not for self-exaltation but of necessity men must bear responsibilities but instead of striving for the supremacy he who is a true leader will pray for an understanding heart to discern between good and evil therefore we must ask the question when you are placed in any position even as children in school maybe you are made the class captain or you are made the leader of any sort, whether it is a prefect in one area or the other, we must understand that we need an understanding heart to discern between good and evil so that we can execute the will of God in that position. Solomon, Joash, Hezekiah, David, and anyone who is given a position today of responsibility is not to see that position as a place of superiority but a place of duty position indeed does not make a man holy. Therefore, those in position are to remain humble. Only those who see it as a place of superiority will undertake the work with marrying and partying and drunkenness and so-called thanksgiving services that is like that of the Yahoo boys and fraud stars, like the ones they do when they have succeeded in getting their money. What I'm referring to here, you see sometimes when people are given position like conference presidents, district pastors and all of that, you see them throw parties and give I want to do a Thanksgiving ceremony that is the ceremony that is like that of the world when they are placed in a position that they look at it as something for superiority where do we hear of prophets doing this it's highly out of place for ministers to do this where do we hear of prophets who held the most holy office given to men apart from our Messiah doing a service of Thanksgiving because of the duty laid on them Jesus the apostles, all the prophets and reformers always saw their position as a place of service and not a place of superiority. And they never ever did any so-called thanksgiving service for being called to office. The call found them self-distrustful, meek, humble and feeling inadequate for the position. But today we see people striving to be this pres- conference and union president and district. And that. If anyone had a sense of the sacredness of the duty and sees the work as one of necessity, understanding that the position brings even greater damnation to those who miscarry the work, there will be less strife for position and superiority and more meekness and prayer. It's very important. Like I said, let me repeat. When the apostles were chosen, the 12 disciples, did you hear them going around, oh Lord, let's go and give a Thanksgiving service and then we'll throw a party. Oh, they just made me the president of the conference or the president of the union. Oh, thank the Lord for me and all of that. If we understand the sacredness of such a position, we will be like Solomon and say, Lord, I don't know how to do this work. I'm a little child. I don't know how to go out or come in. Look at the amount of people that have been put under my care. If I make a mistake, woe is me. If many presidents, pastors, would understand that if they make a mistake, the Lord is going to hold them responsible for it, then they will not carry the work and begin it, begin their service with partying and marrying and a mindset that doesn't understand the responsibility that is given to them. You know, before Solomon assumed position, that actually happened. Let us contrast now between somebody who sees the position as a place of superiority and one who sees it as of necessity like we read of necessity men must bear responsibilities there's nothing wrong in being a king or a president there's nothing wrong in these things it is a necessity somebody must hold those positions there are positions in this world someone must be there someone must be general conference president somebody must be the pastor the district and conference pastor and all of that 
But how do you enter into the work? That is what we are trying to look at here. We read the path of men who are placed as leaders is not an easy one, but do many understand that? But they are to see in every difficulty a call to prayer. Never a day to fail of consulting the great source of all wisdom. Strengthened and enlightened by the master worker, they will be enabled to stand, stand firm against unholy influences and to discern right from wrong, good from evil. They will approve that which God approves and will strive earnestly against the introduction of wrong principles into his course. The wisdom that Solomon desired above riches, honor, and long, or long life, God gave him. His petition for a quick mind, a large heart, and a tender spirit was granted. And we are to make the same petition. And we are to see the work as one where we need discernment to resist unholy influences and not one where we bring in unholy influences like i was saying for one who sees this position not of necessity but of a place of superiority there's a way they do it adonijah is the fourth child of king david the first child of david was amnon he was killed the second child was the son of abigail his name was chileab chileab or daniel he had two names chileab or daniel and chileab we don't hear anything about him but the third son, Absalom, was dead already. Now this fourth son, Adonijah of Haggit, felt that he was the one who was going to be king and he was resting for the position, striving for it, striving for superiority. And what did he do? In the book of 1 Kings chapter 1, reading from verse 5, it says, Then Adonijah, the son of Haggit, exalted himself. Note that word. He exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. So take note of how he did it. He prepared followers. You see, politicians, even pastors are like politicians these days. Not all of them anyway. Some of them behave this way. Prepared himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man. And his mother bare him after Absalom. So his mother was a fourth wife. Doesn't mean that he's Absalom's uh, brother from the same mother. His mother is Haggit. Absalom's mother was Maka. So he was a fourth child. His mother bare him after Absalom. So that's to tell us that knowing that Amnon is dead after Absalom, he, he seems to be the next in charge. And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they, following Adonijah, helped him. But Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rei, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep. So take note of how Adonijah is installing himself and exalting himself in position. He says, And Adonijah slew sheep, and oxen, and fat cattle by the stone of Zoheleth, which is by Enrogel, and called all his brethren, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. But Nathan the prophet, and Beniah, and the mighty men, and Solomon his brother, he called not. Now, question. Why was Adonijah striving for supremacy? Why did he throw a party over it? It is because he saw the position of king as one like the kings of the heathen who used the office for sensual gratification and pleasure and lordship. This was why he did it this way. Now let us contrast Adonijah's way of exalting himself into position with that of the true king, Solomon. When Nathan heard about what was going on, Nathan said, let him go and meet David to discuss this with him. Meanwhile, Bathsheba, the, 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 the wife of David also, which is the mother of Solomon, came to meet David to tell him because she was not invited to that place. Solomon also was not invited, which means if they don't go, when Adonijah now becomes king, he will ask Bathsheba and Solomon, so you didn't come for my party, right? You know how people do, oh, I was made king and you didn't come for my party, my coronation ceremony, my this, and you didn't attend it. They look at it like, oh, since you didn't attend, you were not in support of my rulership, of my government. And then she was, she was afraid that Adonijah was going to kill her and Solomon. So she went to meet David and David was already sick, ready to die at that time and went to meet him and told him what was going on. Meanwhile, Nathan also was coming, unknown to him that Bathsheba was also talking to David. It says in verse 23, 
And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said Adonijah shall reign after me? And he shall sit upon my throne? For he is gone down this day, and hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance. I want you to take note of that. That is the throne of the party. It's just like what people do today when they become presidents of the conferences and pastors. Many of them do the same thing. And continuing, Nathan said, He has called all the king's sons and the captains of the host and Abiathar the priest, and behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save King Adonijah. But me, even me thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Beniah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, had he, not, he has not called. Is this thing done by my lord the king? And thou, hast thou not showed it unto thy servant, who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, As the Lord liveth that has redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, Let my lord King David live forever. Now I want us to see how Solomon was coronated as king. In verse 33 says, The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your lord and cause Solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there king over Israel and blow ye the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. Then you shall come up after him, that he may come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of my Lord the king say so too. As the Lord hath been with my Lord the king, even so let him be with Solomon. Verse 38, So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Beniah the son of Jehoiada and the Cherethites and the Pelethites went down and caused Solomon to ride upon the king's mule and brought him to Gihon. And Zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet and all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. Amen. Do you see that there was no slaying of, of, of sheep in the abundance? Do you see that there was no eating and drinking as Nathan described was going on for Adonijah? Like I want to remind us, look at Moses, look at Aaron, look at Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, look at Elijah, Elisha, the 12 apostles, Paul. Where do you see these men when they are called to office throwing a party like many do today? It is wholly out of place, like Adonijah. Many presidents and pastors are like Adonijah today. When they feel that they are called to position, to show you that they are not really called, that's what they do. They throw parties and say, oh, come and join me, we are doing Thanksgiving ceremony. Oh, wow. Did Elijah do Thanksgiving ceremony for the sacred work he was going to do? If you really understand the work that the Lord is calling you to do, you will know that it is wholly out of place for you to do that. If Jeremiah understood the work the Lord was calling him to do, and what did Jeremiah say? Lord, I am not capable. Isaiah, the same thing. Daniel, John the Baptist, all of them. They find out that understanding the responsibility they were going to hold, it was not something that was to be entered into with merriment and drinking and eating. It was a work to enter into with solemnity, sacredness and consecration as they anointed him with oil, anointed Solomon. That was it. And Solomon will be filled with a sense of the sacredness of the position that he was going to hold. Because there was no merriment, he would understand that this is a sacred responsibility and that's why he would ask for wisdom. But there were other things that happened in that day that would make Solomon realize his need for wisdom. There was so much intrigue in that day. It says, when Adonijah was having that party, they heard the noise coming up. Remember that Joab was with him there and many other valiant men. In verse 42, he says, And while he yet speak, that's Adonijah was asking, What is this noise I'm hearing? And then, while he yet speak, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar, the priest, came and told him what was going on, that David has anointed Solomon as priest, and that Zadok, the Cherethites, the Pelethites were all behind him. 
Adonijah became afraid. Joab also became afraid. All the king's sons who were with Adonijah at that place, they all ran away, realizing that they were doing some sort of self-exaltation that was unnecessary. This was a solemn occasion, a sacred occasion for King Solomon and Adonijah was kept aside. We have to understand that everything that has to do with our lives and the position the Lord places us, even if it's an office, it doesn't have to be a sacred office in, in the sense of church stuff even when it comes to secular duties maybe you are promoted maybe you are put in a certain position do not carry it as though it is something for superiority it's a sacred responsibility you have been placed in the position of influence what you need to do is to pray seeing your weakness pray not one that you throw a party and tell people come and rejoice with me eating and drinking no You have to see it as a sacred responsibility. Thank God and see it as a sacred responsibility because if you miscarry that work, the Lord will hold you responsible. Now, the other things that happened during the time when Solomon was put as a king would make us understand why he needed wisdom. Adonijah tried to trick him later on. When Adonijah submitted himself to Solomon and said, Please don't kill me. I understand you are king and I accept you as king. No problem. But he did something that made Solomon to understand that there is a lot of two-faced people around me. In 1 Kings 2, reading from verse 13, he says, And Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, and she said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. He said, Moreover, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And she said, Say on. And he said, Thou knowest that the kingdom was mine, and that all Israel set their faces on me, that I should reign. Howbeit, the kingdom is turned about, and is become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. Do you see his nice words here? He's, the Lord has given it to Solomon. And now I ask one petition of thee. Deny me not. And she said unto him, Say on. And he said, Speak, I pray thee, unto Solomon the king. For he will not say thee nay, that he give me Abishag the Shunammite to wife. Now Abishag is that lady that was brought for King David when he was about, when he was sick. There was a lady that was brought to him to take care of him. That was the Abish, that's who Abishag is. And Bathsheba said, Well, I will speak for thee unto the king. Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. Then she said, I desire one small petition of thee. I pray thee, say me not nay. And the king said unto her, Ask on my mother, for I will not say to thee nay. And she said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah thy brother to wife. And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, And why dost thou ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is mine elder brother, even for him, and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. The king Solomon swore. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah have not spoken this word against his own life. Now therefore, as the Lord liveth, which hath established me, and set me on the throne of David my father, and who hath made me an house, as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death this day. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him that he died. And then the other people who connived with him, like Joab, Abiathar, Joab was killed. Abiathar was warned and told to refrain from all this trickery. Solomon had seen the intrigue that happened through Absalom, his brother. Adonijah, his elder brother, had already tried to deceive him now through his mother. His mother was even deceived by Adonijah. Solomon saw that there was so much deception around the throne. The conspiracy of Ahithophel, the king's counselor, was fresh in his memory. Who could have guessed that Ahithophel was the one scheming all of that things that happened, all of the things that happened in the time of Absalom? Amnon also did the same to David. Amnon deceived David and said, Oh, let Thamar come and uh, take care of me, whereas what he wanted to do was to rape her. Then Joab had also killed Abner and Amasa with the same kind of trickery. Solomon understood all these things. It all happened during the time of David and even now when he was a king, his own brother had already tried to trick him and deceived his mother. How could he rule these people with so much deception around him? That was what Solomon was surrounded with. No wonder he said him to himself and he said to God, I am but a little child. I do not have to know how to go out or come in. When he realized that even somebody like Abiathar, if you understand who Abiathar was, Abiathar was that same man who helped King David during the days of Absalom. He was a priest. He also connived with David's son Adonijah, which is Solomon's own brother. 
Solomon realized he couldn't just trust anybody. Reading from Conflict and Courage, page 190, paragraph 5, it says, It will be well for us to carefully study Solomon's prayer and to consider every point on which depended his receiving the rich blessings that the Lord was ready to give him. In 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 6, Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, the great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge these people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Amen. Now, do you understand why Solomon will make this prayer? When you look at what his brother Adonijah had done, how his mother was deceived, how Joab had connived with Adonijah and even Abiathar the priest had connived with him, and even the rest of his brothers, they all went to that party that Adonijah did. When you understand that, then you would understand why Solomon said, I don't know, this. I need understanding because they could deceive him anytime. Do you understand also that when you are placed in position in your office and when you are promoted and also in the church, such things also happen. There's a lot of deception around you. People will come to you and want to speak well, whereas they have another thing in their mind. There are others who will come and want to rub shoulders with you because they realize, oh, they are in a place of influence. That's why you must ask for wisdom. Solomon did not ask for wealth. He asked for that which was necessary. And the kind of wisdom he was referring to here was not just wisdom to understand who is trying to deceive him, but a wisdom that will help him to execute God's will and to be able to discern between good and bad, between right and wrong. That was what he asked for. And the Lord answered his prayers. We are told God commended Solomon's prayer and he will today hear and commend the prayers of those who in faith and humility cry to him for aid. He will certainly answer the fervent prayer for a preparation for his service. In answer, he will say, Here I am. What would thou that I shall do for thee? He who led Solomon's mind and as he made this prayer will today teach his servants how to pray for what they need. End of quote. God said to Solomon in verse in First Kings three verse First Kings three verse ten, the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing, and God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor had has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any rise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all these days. You see, if we sincerely ask, you don't just go and say, Oh Lord, give me wisdom and understanding, but in your heart, what you really want is for your enemies to be destroyed and for riches and for long life. Because God specifically said, you didn't ask for long life, you didn't ask for riches, you didn't ask for your enemies to be destroyed. God specifically said that. We cannot deceive God. We may come to God and say, okay, let me pray like Solomon. Lord, don't give me long life. But he knows your heart. He knows what is in your heart, whether you want your enemies to be destroyed. God said, you didn't ask for your enemies to be destroyed. Therefore, I will give you more than what you've asked. And for us also, when we do the same thing, if we sincerely ask like Solomon asked, that all we want is just to do the Lord's will. It's not for our enemies to be destroyed. It's not for our lives to be prolonged and all of that. No, no, no. Just I want it to be that while I'm in position, I will execute your will. The Lord will give us what we asked for. We also need to always feel our weakness like I have also said in the previous devotion and pray the same prayer like Solomon. Many have op entered upon their businesses with self-confidence, thinking themselves capable, but they have failed. They did not trust in God. They did not properly estimate everything involved in the work. They did not count the cost, therefore they failed. If we, they, they, you see, we need to count the cost and see our weakness and have a constant dependence on God. Even in your business, no matter what your work is, do the same thing. Count the cost and the Lord will give you grace to overcome. 
The Lord will help you. Don't think that, oh, I have wisdom and experience. I've been in this business for a long time. And then you enter in self-confidence. Always pray. People can come to your business wanting to deceive you and you will never know. And then they may want to, may want to make you involve yourself in something that is evil. That is what your concern should be. Don't say, oh Lord, while I'm doing this business, help me so that I'll get rich. Or help me so that I'll be better than my enemies, destroy my enemies around me. You see, when you go to the markets, when there are so many shops, people there are envying each other, or checking who is getting more money than the other. Don't worry yourself about that. Rather, pray to the Lord that in that your business, the Lord should give you grace to discern between good and bad, between right and wrong, and that he should help you execute what is right in that business. When you pray for that, the Lord will give you more than what you ask, just as he did for Solomon. Let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, we thank you for these lessons that you are teaching us to know what to ask for in our prayers. Lord, I ask for all who are listening and even for myself. Lord, please give us an understanding heart that we may discern between good and bad, between right and wrong. Help us, Lord, not to be so concerned about riches and long life and also about what our so-called competitors or enemies are doing and feel like, oh, we want you to bring them down. Oh, Lord, help us not to be concerned about that. But I pray that you help us to be more concerned about knowing what to do that will please you and to do it in a way that will also please you. How to go about it, Lord. Please give us that wisdom. And glorify your name. Jesus, Lord, Thank you.